Online banking or traditional banking? Which one's better? In today's video, you will learn about what these banks are, the advantages, as well as the disadvantages of using each of them. If you find this video helpful and entertaining, don't forget to hit that like button and share it with your friends and family, as well as subscribe if you haven't already. And if you've already done that, well then, what's up YouTube? Glad to have you back in the economic lifestyle. Alright guys, now that introduction's done, let's get straight to the point. Let's start with the traditional banks. These are also known as brick and mortar banks. These are the ones that you're more familiar with. 9 out of 10 times, most people started a bank account with a traditional bank. Here are some examples of traditional banks to refresh your mind. In other words, these banks have physical locations you can visit personally to handle any bank business. Now let's start with the advantages of being a customer with a traditional bank. First is the face-to-face -face interaction. It's simple. Some people would rather talk about financial business in person rather than through a telephone or computer sending email. It just gives you that peace of mind knowing you're being reassured by a person looking at you rather than seeing an email or text from a person you don't even know exists. And the second advantage, continuing from the first one, is it's easier to fix banking issues or problems in person. Because sometimes you can have a variety of issues with your bank accounts, which include late fees, ATM fees, lost card fees, and so on. With traditional banks, you can just walk in and explain the issue, which can be reassured a lot faster and better in person rather than be put on hold on the telephone or having to email your online bank and who knows when you might get an answer. Plus, let's face it, there are some issues that will be a lot easier to explain in person and better handled in person rather than phone or email. And the third advantage, which is what I hear from a lot of traditional bankers, is they feel their money is a lot more safer being in a physical bank rather than being online because they fear their money could get hacked or they could be victims of cyber crimes. It just simply comes down to this. There's still some people out there who don't trust the internet or the online world yet. And I don't blame them. So for these people having their money in a traditional bank gives them a lot more peace of mind and there's nothing wrong with that. That's how they feel. Now let's talk about some of the cons or disadvantages of being a traditional bank customer. First is the long queues during certain times of the day. Trust me, this does not need to be explained. No one likes long lines. Another problem is you can only visit during work hours. So if you need something important done after work hours, you'll have to wait to meet with a bank teller until the next day. The next con is lots of fees when it comes to traditional banks. These include monthly maintenance fees, proper statement fees, account closure fees, card replacement fees, and many more, but it depends on your traditional bank of course. And the worst con of traditional banks is the horrible interest rates on savings accounts. The national bank average on savings accounts with traditional banks is 0.09%. I think it's actually lower than that. But that's not even close to catching up with inflation. By the way, inflation is 2% a year. Look at these interest saving account examples with these traditional banks. 
Now this is the percentage your money will grow the longer you keep it in the saving account with one of these banks. Exactly. Not even worth keeping money in a savings account with these banks. To give you a more in-depth idea, let's look at this example right here. Let's say you had $35,000 saved in a savings account with one of these traditional banks. We will say Bank of America. And don't worry, I got the math for you. Let's multiply the $35,000 times the 0.03 percent because 0.03 percent is the rate your money will grow at if you hold it in a savings account with Bank of America which will equal to ten dollars and fifty cents a year okay I don't know about you but at this point why leave my money in a traditional bank saving alright guys let's move on to the online banks for those who are not familiar with these banks, these are the banks where you manage your accounts with a computer or mobile device to deposit checks, transfer funds, and pretty much any bank activity you can think of, all done online. Here are some examples you can look up of online banks. Now let's start with the cons or disadvantages of being a customer of an online bank. First of all, since we know everything is done online, then that means there's very limited to no person-to-person -person interaction. This can be tough for people who would rather have their bank issues handled in person, face-to-face, -face, and feel a lot more trust when talking to a bank professional in person, rather than on phone or email. And secondly, it's all via internet. And everyone knows there are always technical difficulties that can occur whenever we deal with the internet. Which means you might have to wait longer to do any bank businesses if you have no internet. Or your internet is somehow lagging and having technical issues, which happens time to time. Another issue is that it can be a hassle to try and deposit money. And lastly, some online banks don't offer checkings accounts. For anyone who's interested in having one, of course. Moving on to the pros of online banking. First of all, believe it or not, it's just as safe as regular traditional banks. Some people shy away from online banks because of the likely hacks that could happen online. But here's the thing, guess what? The traditional banks store all your info in a computer system as well. It's really all the same. And just like the brick and mortar banks, these online banks are also FDIC insured. Now what is FDIC you might ask? The FDIC is the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation and this agency is backed by the US government. Which means if anything was to happen to your money in a bank, you would be guaranteed every single penny back as long as that bank is FDIC insured. Keep in mind, the average FDIC approved by majority of banks is $250,000, which means you'll get up to that much back, depending on how much you've lost. However, there are some online banks that insure way higher than that. The point I'm trying to make is people should know these online banks are also FDIC insured, which means you shouldn't worry about your money because you're guaranteed it back if the worst case happens. Secondly, online banks are convenient. Internet is available 24 seven, which means you can access it anytime, anywhere in the world, as long as you have internet. 
And the third pro is online banks have fewer fees they require you to pay. The reason the traditional banks have you pay higher fees is because they need the money to maintain their branches all over the country. Online banks don't necessarily have that many branches, if at all, so they are very low maintenance, which means they won't hassle you for more fees. And this brings us to our biggest pro of online banking. Since they tend to have lower fees, they use that extra cash to give their customers through higher interest rates, especially on savings accounts. The majority of online savings accounts average 2% and higher, which matches or even beats inflation rates. Take a look at these interest rates from these online banks. Now let's go back to our $35,000 example in a savings account. And let's say now we have it in Wealthfront. And that will equal $812 in one year of doing nothing but keeping it in a savings account with Wealthfront as opposed to the $10.50 you get for having it in a savings account with Bank of America. Keep in mind, all this is compound interest and it will keep building every year. Now comes the ultimate question, which bank should you go with, online or traditional bank? My answer to that is there's no rule or law that tells you that you can't have accounts with multiple banks. In my opinion, having a traditional bank account and an online bank account is the best alternative. Think of it like the best of both worlds. For example, this is what I do. I have a local traditional bank, which I only keep for my checkings account, and I can use the ATMs. And I have a high yield online savings account, which is pretty much where I keep my emergency fund. So my emergency fund can continue to grow and grow on the high interest rates of this online bank. It's pretty much like having the best of both worlds. And that's all the time I have for today, my friends. If you liked the video, please don't forget to like and share. Comment, tell me what you think about these banks, and tell me, do you have both banks, or do you prefer one of them? Also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.